a very limited uh, meeting for tonight. But what is really would be the main agenda is the discussion of the continuing increase of uh, COVID uh, patients uh, in our land. Uh, uh, so education, yes, as well. Take your time, I'm hoping. Yeah. Uh, during our last meeting last Monday, uh, you asked us to uh, present a, a formal uh, proposal on the advantages and disadvantages of having limited face-to-face -face learning uh, at this time. They're limited only in areas where there is low risk mm -hmm. assessment and where uh, there is compliance with the requirements of the Department of Education, as well as compliance with the uh, minimum health requirements of the department. Yes. Uh, uh, only in I know I know not, not for everybody, only for those which are considered low risk. And uh, if there is face-to-face, -face, it will not be for the entire five days of a school week. It could only be one day or two days and um, the sessions could be uh, limited to the most important uh, things that a child should, should learn. And it is now being done. La Salle uh, did it, they started last June, and there's a very small school in Sikihor. It's also started last June, also with limited face-to-face, -face, and it's, it's working. So, uh, the local government officials have been writing us and uh, international schools also have been write, uh, writing uh, us and requesting if we can allow limited face-to-face -face for those who will be able to take the necessary precautions. And so we have submitted, uh, Mr. President, to the Secretariat uh, both a PowerPoint presentation as well as a text describing how it's going to be done. Yeah. 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 So, so we are complying uh, with your uh, instructions, uh, and if I may divert, because a while back you were talking about medicine, we have Filipinos who finished medicine in Russia, and uh, they are practicing in the Philippines. Uh, my niece did finished her studies in medicine in Russia for seven years in the Russian language at the top of her class. And she's now provincial health officer uh, in uh, Catanduanes. And there are several more. There was a period when Filipinos went to Russia, but without, uh, uh, without the usual official uh, uh, arrangements. And they finished, and some of them are back, so they can really vouch for the high quality of uh, medical education. But to go back to face-to-face, -to -face, uh, I am just submitting, you may not have time anymore at this hour to to listen to the presentation. No, I have. Uh, okay. I have. Yes. Uh, can I please? Yes. I must listen to you, <laughs> not only find the time. We are very pleased and happy to report that in terms of the public and private school enrollment total, uh, in spite of the combined impact of COVID as well as the destruction on the economy, uh, the downturn of the economy, we were able to achieve 77% of the total enrollment compared to last year. So public, 90% of our students uh, last year uh, ang naabot natin. So, uh, in spite of these two very uh, difficult situations na kaya natin, ang ating problem is with the private uh, school enrollees kasi only 27% uh, have returned. And we now have this, what I describe as the phenomenon of private school uh, students migrating to the public school. Uh, ang latest number is 347,860. 
And this is because, Mr. President, um, the private schools have been affected by, by the downturn in the economy. They have parents who lose their jobs, uh, cannot already uh, fund the uh, studies of their students. So I also have presented a timeline when we all started. We started our work April, May 28th. That's when you express support for blended learning. And uh, when you uh, gave instructions that uh, you will not allow face-to-face -face learning, we also correspondingly uh, took out from our uh, learning uh, continuity program the face-to-face uh, -face learning portion. But right now, Mr. President, we are receiving many queries and many uh, requests from local chief executives, from legislators, private and international schools. There are 71 uh, international yeah. schools all over the country, and they are requesting if limited face-to-face -face, uh, classes can be uh, held. Uh, I have here a few slides which I will not uh, repeat anymore, wherein we showed that uh, uh, children are not as badly affected by the COVID uh, phenomenon as the adults, especially the elderly. Um, we are saying that of the total uh, confirmed cases, for example, uh, of our 67,456 confirmed cases, uh, only uh, 2,832, most of them also mild, or 4%, 4.20% are children. And in terms of our records, Mr. President, uh, we only have 16 recorded deaths of children, which is 0.87% of the total deaths uh, as of July uh, 19, Mr. President. No. So now I go to the possible uh, terms and conditions, what would be the advantage of limited face-to-face? -face? Well, uh, both the learners, our students, and our teachers are familiar with face-to-face -face learning, so they will not have difficulty adjust adjusting. Administrative costs will also be lower, and also uh, the uh, limited face-to-face -face classes closes inequality gaps kasi kung we rely, for example, um, heavily on online learning, then you will have equity problems for those who may not have access to digital uh, equipment. And also, this is the most important. The, uh, when we teach our children, we teach them not only about facts, about knowledge, about philosophies, about history, but we teach them how to deal with their fellow human beings. And that can only be attained with, to a great degree by face-to-face uh, -face interaction among children, especially as they are young. Now, some of the disadvantages are, of course, the uh, health risks. That's why we want to limit uh, very uh, strictly uh, the um, implementation of face-to-face -face and also um, the administrative costs because uh, maintaining the health standards uh, and so on, and also of our own buildings uh, will also be uh, costly for us. Now, uh, what are the possible terms and conditions which we can impose, aside from the fact that uh, those who will be allowed to do so uh, should be uh, uh, at the lower uh, risk assessment? So we say that the first condition is that it can only be allowed in low-risk areas or those at least under modified general community quarantine in the transition phase. But it has to be on a case-to-case -case basis as uh, advised by uh, Secretary uh, Galvez. Uh, the next is, we were thinking that up to January 2021, during the third quarter, we can start allowing between August and at present, we will be assessing the schools. Secretary uh, Galvez advises us to make physical infect, uh, inspections of the facilities of the, the schools. So uh, we can do it up to January. But as I said, La Salle already is into it since June. And then the little island of Sikihor has been quietly having its own uh, version also uh, since June as well. Now, um, what are other terms? 
we are saying, for example, Mr. President, that we should be coordinating not only within DepEd, but the LGUs concerned, because they are the ones asking for it mainly, uh, and uh, the local health authorities. Um, and then uh, the fourth condition that uh, we would like to impose is we have to have stringent health standards, especially at this time. We were thinking perhaps August, no, but with the new developments, the numbers, and so on, we should be imposing uh, stringent health standards as suggested by the Department of Health and also by AITF. Um, and, and some of these are, will take time, like uh, preparing uh, the buildings, uh, making sure that social distancing will be, uh, will be observed, and also how do we do physical education. And uh, there's also advice that we have to but this will not be difficult for our uh, public schools kasi hindi naman sila air-conditioned, hindi na discourage ang air-conditioned classes, etc. And also, number five takes into consideration very seriously the advice of Secretary uh, Galvez and uh, Secretary Año that we have to have a joint inspection. It's not automatic. Kung low risk ka, pwede ka nang mag-open. No, they have to be inspected. Uh, and I was saying that uh, DepEd, since the time of your mother, is structured in such a manner that you have people down to the principal level, the superintendent, and so on, who really know what is the situation at the um, frontline level. So uh, we want to uh, follow the advice of the National Task Force. So in summary, Mr. President, uh, for basic education, uh, we are um, saying that maybe we can allow limited face-to-face -face learning, but to be strictly regulated in the light of present conditions. So uh, we have to listen to at least four agencies uh, which would have an interest in the matter. One, the location of the schools have to be assessed as low risk, but that is only the first step, Mr. President. Secondly, our schools have to be friendly to the idea of face-to-face -face, uh, during the time of COVID. Like, uh, we cannot allow schools uh, very, with very small classrooms. Kung small ang classrooms, we have to adjust the number of students in a class, maybe 10 per batch and so on. And then uh, they have to be uh, in, in good state of, of repair. They are safe kasi dumaanan ng mga bagyo, may lindol, may and we have to make sure that even if they are safe from COVID, they might not be safe also from weak or, or weakened uh, buildings of ours. So, uh, kailangan then standard and physical condition ng aming schools. And then, uh, importante are, uh, is that the schools should also meet the minimum health standards. We have already, as, as per your instruction, we already have... Uh, organized and um, created also our minimum health standards. And it is in writing. We have circulated it actually uh, in DepEd already because school or no school, we are imposing the minimum health standards. Uh, and this is in consultation with DOH. We benefit so much from the, their advice. And then fourth, the host local government, because they are largely the ones who are asking for this, aside from the international schools, they have to be ready to support financially uh, the, the, the schools because they have the SEF. SEF is a national tax on real property, 1% of which should go to education and which the provinces collect. So it's a national tax. It's our national tax, which the provinces are uh, collecting, Young SEF, the special education fund. So uh, they have to be prepared to... To, um, to help finance uh, the needs of these uh, of these schools. So itong apat na conditions, Mr. President, have to be uh, fulfilled before we allow uh, limited. The, the accent is on limited because the public is reaction na may mem pa sa Secretary of Education na I said daw patay kong patay. Pero kailangan magklase, which of course is not. Uh, I would not be capable of making such a statement. Uh, it is widely uh, circulated, and um, so uh, this is very important.
to, to us to continue the learning process, but at the same time, assure the safety of our, our students. So, ayon, Mr. President. And then we have a written text also about, about this presentation. So, ayon. For your um, consideration. Limited lang talaga, sir. <laughs> like, those who are asking are like Sikihor or like the Nagat Islands, uh, Siargao, oh, they're, they're the ones who probably have zero level, and then local governments who are now declared as low risk. I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you on this. Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. Just, uh, let's try to make uh, ourselves productive, even how constricted the times are okay ako sa ano thank you thank you uh, any other report that uh, yung John Galvez you want to say something mm, ang ano nito is uh, It's, it's very hard for uh, us really to impose it on ano, ng and even in the wearing of the mask. I hate to, you know, personally, I hate to uh, arrest people for the mere uh, violation of. Uh, a, a, a rule which he says that they have to. Ang problema, kailangan na siya do ang cooperation ng. The, the, the mayors have to do more. They have to do more. They have to take care. Uh, I, I, I think I'm addressing myself to Secretary Anyo. I think that we'll, uh, if there are so many violations in a particular place, and uh, well, of course the police uh, uh, is uh, lacking uh, in the the inf in the enforcement of. In ad inadequate response to the uh, rules that we are uh, imposing simply because we want people protected. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, magandang gabi po. Uh, kanina pong umaga ay nagkaroon kami ng pagpupulong uh, sa pangunguna po ni Secretary Duque, Secretary Lorenzana, at iba pang mga key members ng IATF. Uh, kausap po namin yung mga officials ng ULAP, uh, kasama po yung League of Provinces, League of Cities, League of Municipalities, at Liga ng mga Barangay, at lahat po ng mga governors at mayors na under po ng GCQ. At maganda po ang naging uh, resulta naman ng pag-uusap. Uh, nagkaroon po kami ng mga Kasunduan po kung paano yung pagpapatupad ng mga localized lockdown. Gagawa rin po sila ng kanilang proposal kung paano po ang magandang paraan para maihandle po yung mga LSI na uuwi sa kanilang probinsya. At yung pagpapatupad po ng, ano, ng uh, health standards po. Uh, gusto namin magkaroon po ng isang implementation lang po ng uh, pare-parehas about LGU kung Ilang araw po dapat ikukulong yung mga nagpa, nagbabiolate sa pagsusuot ng mask, face mask, at uh, hindi nagpipisical distancing, at kung magkano po yung multa para po kahit saan pumunta, ay pare-parehas yung pagpapatupad. Ito po kasi ang pinaka-importante para ma-prevent yung pag-spread ng virus. Magsimula po sa pagsunod sa panuntunan ng bawat mamamayan. Uh, yung pong mga... Uh, pagkakaroon ng transmission sa iba't ibang community, eh yun po bunga kapag ka ang ating mga kababayan na hindi sumusunod sa mga patakaran ng health standards. 
at tuloy-tuloy po yung aming pag-uusap. Um, gagawin po namin namin ay uh, pupunta naman po kami sa ibaba at uh, yung mga particular po mga uh, city at uh, uh, down po hanggang barangay na dapat ilalockdown. Ay uh, meron po kaming yung tinatawag na code teams. Ito po yung coordinated operation to defeat epidemic. Yung mga expert po ay pupunta doon sa ibaba at tutulungan mo talaga yung ating mga mayor sa pagpapatupad ng lockdown. Kompleto po yung actions na gagawin mula po simula hanggang matapos at uh, importante po talaga yung mailipat po yung mga positive na patient sa ating isolation facilities para hindi po makahawa sa community. So tuloy-tuloy po ang ginagawa namin ugnayan sa ating mga mayors at governors at uh, sila naman po talaga ay uh, Uh, pursigido po na maipatupad yung uh, mandato nila para matapos at malabanan itong COVID, Mr. President. Mind you, uh, there is a raging fight between federal government and uh, itong local states sa Amerika. Simply because there are mayors who refuse to abide by these uh, rules of um, when everybody is talking about all experts pra practically, be it in Europe or America, and the doctors, the eminent doctors, the, the, the only, they only have one unison statement. You want uh, COVID slow down or stop, wear a mask or do not go out of your house if you do not want to wear one. Yun lang, at saka yung social distancing. There is no other way that we can prevent COVID from uh, transferring from one person to the other unless we obey. The only thing that's going our way, in our favor, is that we are a unitary type of government. At saka ang, ang, ang hold ng central government is different from the United States. We have more freedom there. And there are things which is in no known and uh, nobody can... But uh, dito sa Pilipinas, pag sinabi ng, well, whatever department is the, pag sinabi niya na ganun, ganun talaga, and you can enforce it. Otherwise, they would be guilty of, well, uh, uh, simple uh, gross negligence or uh, outright if the Secretary of uh, Local Government would deem it necessary for your uh, wanton then uh, you can be suspended. And as a matter of fact, you can be terminated. Yan na sa That has no place in the Philippines because everybody is bound by the national policy. Itong, itong atin naman, ang task force is really for the good of the people for all. Kaya we do not have any qualms in uh, arresting people. It might Under ordinary times, that's what I'm saying about to say kanina, is that a simple violation of not wearing a mask seems to be trivial. And social distancing, all of these things. But during times of uh, health uh, issues, pandemonium, you can because it's, it can be a serious crime transmitting your 
the theory is that you are the career that is why you you should wear a mask so as not to pass on the infection to the other guy baliktad ang psychology diyan para talagang nawala sila so we'll have to ask our police to be more strict kahulihin talaga. Uh, a little uh, shame would put them on notice forever. At sino ba naman gusto mo, mahuli ka. But if you are uh, brought to the police station and detained there, that would give you a lesson for all time. So, gano'n na. No. At saka nakikita, makikita nila. Yung, yung ano, mahirap ito, nasa squatters, gano'n din sa daba ko, sabi nila. Sabi nila, hindi ako napunta doon. Yung ask the police to function the way they should in times like this. Is there any other... Uh, uh, Mr. President, magandang gabi po sa inyo, uh, Mr. Senator and uh, fellow members of uh, the IATF. Kanina po nagpulong kami, ng, uh, gaya po ng nabanggit ni Secretary Ed Anyo, ang uh, mga kinatawan po ng, uh, ng uh, Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines at ang uh, League of uh, Provinces of the Philippines at ang mga League of Municipalities at iba pa po mga uh, associations or uh, leagues no? na binubuo po ito ng mga iba't ibang mga local chief executives, governors, and mayors. At kanina po, ginamit namin ng pagkakataon na ibahagi sa kanila ang mga karanasan na magagandang mga karanasan ng atin pong uh, mga ibang local chief executives, yung pong kanilang best practices. Ang isa pong halimbawa dito yung sa Baguio City. Sa kanya pong containment strategy, si Mayor uh, Benji Magalong ay uh, uh, kanya pong uh, uh, shinair o ibinahagi yung uh, success uh, uh, elements of uh, his uh, containment strategy, uh, lalo na po sa uh, patungkol sa contact tracing, uh, Mr. President. So, yung contact tracing ng Baguio po ay uh, talagang uh, masinsinan at talagang uh, uh, kanila pong nasasakupan ang uh, mga na-expose sa bawat uh, positive case ng uh, COVID. At sa totoo nga lang po, Mr. President, ang kanilang ratio is 1 is to 37. For every one positive case, mga 37 ang kanila pong uh, na-trace uh, na na-expose po doon sa positive confirmed case. At uh, maganda po ang naging resulta nito dahil uh, uh, na, na abot nila yung mga tao, yung first uh, generation contacts hanggang sa second generation contacts at uh, ito pong mga ito ay uh, na test nila uh, Mr. President. At uh, sa larangan naman ng testing, si uh, ginuong, si Secretary Vince Dizo naman po bilang uh, atin tinagurian uh, uh, testing czar uh, ay nanigurado po na ang uh, testing capacity ay uh, patuloy ang pagtaas at ang daily testing output po ay, uh, ay uh, mapapataas din po dahil nga kung mas marami po matitrace, kinakailangan matest po sila kaagad. At ang uh, sabi po ni uh, uh, Sec, uh, Diz, uh, Sec Dizon ay uh, maabot po natin ang 10 million test by uh, 2021. As of today, ang uh, total tested individuals natin umabot na po ng mga 1,120,000, uh, Mr. President. Sa ganun din po pagpupulong kanina, ay uh, ibinigay din po ang, uh, mga, uh, ang mga developments patungkol po sa expansion ng mga isolation and quarantine uh, facilities ng atin po ng uh, Oplan Kalinga at si Secretary Mark Villar naman po ang nangunguna 
sa pagpapausbong at pagpapalawig po ng lahat ng atin mga uh, isolation, uh, testing uh, isolation and quarantine facilities. Kasama na din po ang mga evacuation centers na posibleng convertible into isolation or quarantine facilities, Mr. President. At kasama din doon po, I amin mean, uh, uh, ipinaulat kay uh, Yusek uh, Bong Vega ang bago pong luklok na atin na uh, uh, Under Secretary of Health na uh, tutukan po at uh, buuin yung atin pong one hospital command uh, uh, system para ang uh, referral uh, system po ay maging maayos mula sa level 1, level 2, and level 3 uh, hospitals uh, and related facilities. So, maganda naman po ang uh, naging uh, ang naging uh, resulta ng aming pong pagpupulong although there will be additional uh, uh, meetings so that we will be able to solidify the uh, agreements and the recommendations po na we arrived at uh, in uh, this morning's meeting. So yun po ang report, yung apat sa contact tracing czar ni Benji uh, Magalong ang uh, ang uh, testing czar po natin na si uh, Secretary Vince Dison at ang uh, atin Oplan Kalinga isolation quarantine czar na si Secretary Mark Villar and last but not the least si uh, Yusek Buang Vega of the DOH who will take charge of uh, increasing bed capacities for critical and severe cases. Kasi alam niyo po Mr. President ang, uh, ang isa po sa atin pinupuntiriya rito ay hanggat sa maaari, wala sanang mamamatay, Mr. President. So, yung early detection, napaka-mahalaga po rito at uh, ang uh, clinical management, kinakailangan po clinical best practice management of all COVID cases across all the clinical uh, spectrum of the uh, uh, COVID cases. So, ito po, naging mabunga po ang aming pong, uh, meeting kanina, uh, ginoong uh, uh, Pangulo, at uh, ifa-follow up po ito through a, uh, a uh, recommendation that will finally be approved by the IATF on, uh, on uh, uh, Monday next week po. So, yun lang po ang karagdagan ulat uh, patungkol po sa ating pong mga meetings. At uh, in fact, nag-meeting din po kami last Saturday, Mr. President, ng mga uh, bilang na mga uh, punong lungsod ng NCR na kung saan po medyo hirap po sila sa kanilang uh, containment strategy at uh, pinakiusapan po namin sila uh, na uh, sabihin sa amin kung ano po yung mga kanilang uh, tulong na kinakailangan para maayudahan po ng uh, national government. At doon na nga po ay uh, nakapagbigay po tayo ng uh, suporta uh, not only in terms of technical support but also in terms of uh, direct uh, uh, assistance uh, testing, uh, quarantine facilities. In fact, ang DepEd nga ay kanila pong uh, sinulatan through the IATF na humihingi ng pahintulot na i-extend po yung gamit ng mga eskwalahan as uh, quarantine facilities. At uh, nagpapasalamat naman po kami kay uh, Secretary uh, Liling Briones na uh, nagbigay po ng kanyang pahintulot na para po natin na uh, mapagamit sa kanila ang mga naturang uh, classrooms. Yun po, Mr. President. Uh, salamat. May I just add, uh, uh, viewing uh, the, the, the events uh, of uh, uh, COVID, uh, yung dimensions ng COVID, uh, in other countries, they have this efficient uh, yung uh, ano nila yung follow-up na contact uh, tracing. Uh, yung iba naman, dito sa atin, oh, mahirap, I, I think. Uh, but, but, but it can be done. Uh, but I said it's a, a Herculean task to do it. Uh, second uh, is yung testing ho. Um, do, do we have the capacity to to do the testing for uh, every citizen in this country? 
Sir, yung testing capacity po natin na uh, sa ngayon as a uh, 74,000 but the uh, daily testing uh, output is uh, anywhere from uh, about 20 to 23,000 uh, daily. Oh, now it's na po yung 25,000. Uh, ang target po natin is 10 million uh, Filipinos to be tested by uh, uh, 2021. And uh, we hope to be able to uh, do the test uh, at 32,000 to about 40,000 a day, Mr. President. So, hindi naman po natin pwedeng itest ang bawat mamamayan. Uh, wala pong bansa ang nakakagawa nito, kahit na po ang pinakamayaman, katulad ng United States of America, hanggang ngayon, sila na nga po may pinakamataas na kaso, sila din po may pinakamataas na nangamamatay na kanilang mamamayan, pero ang kanilang testing uh, ay asa 40 million na, Mr. President. And that's uh, almost uh, uh, close to 9% of the total population of the U.S. of about 370 million Americans. So tayo po, uh, malalagpasan po natin yon Magiging mga 10% po tayo. Of the total population of the Philippines at 109 million, we might be able to reach about uh, 10 million uh, Filipinos by uh, 2021. I say this again because uh, yung testing is also a problem for the U.S. They have to, you know, in highways, they have to put up some special lanes for you to slow down and do some, if, we have not, if you have not been tested, you will be tested. It's, it's a, a bit compulsory in the sense that uh, you, do, you cannot go anywhere except follow the straight line. And when, when your time is up, you, when you are there in front of the uh, medical person, they, they would swab you and uh, testing. Dito sa atin, Well, uh, I think 10,000 would be a good number uh, if you can achieve that. Ang atin lang is, I said, uh, reduce. The, the thing is, uh, we, if, we, uh, if we can do it, actually, we have to reduce it to the barest minimum na ano, yung tao na hindi maano. Uh, yung ayaw in America because they do not some, a good number of people that do not want to be tested because they do not believe in it uh, so that's a problem uh, same with Brazil it's only now that people are dying and they are short of coffins that they realize that they have to follow the WHO. Wala kasi maniwala noon itong sa mask, pati yung social distancing. May nasimati o pag ito the most elementary sa lahat ng ano, right at the beginning, the pandemonium, right at the beginning, it was really a prescribed mandatory thing to have a mask. So, kung ano natin Pilipino to wear mask, maybe we can, I said, reduce the number of patients. Any other comment? Ah, uh, Secretary Galvez. So, susundan so, ko lang po, sir, ang, 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 ang sinabi po ni Secretary uh, Duque pertaining yung pagtalaga po natin ng uh, apat na uh, char. Kasi po yung uh, ating haligi ng ating uh, National Action Plan ay binubuo po ng uh, uh, test, trace, isolate, at saka po yung treat. Uh, dahil po sa lumalaki na, na bilang ng, ano po, ng ating uh, COVID cases, kailangan po talaga matutukan po yung apat na haligi po nito. Dahil kasi ito po ay talagang sa lahat po ng mga ibang bansa na naging uh, nakita natin uh, nagiging maganda ang kanilang kalagayan ay yung apat po nito ang talagang haligi ng kanilang mga estratehiya. Unang-una po kasi yung sa ano po sa trace. Ngayon po lang namin nalaman na yung ginagawa pala ng ating mga mayors ay kulang pa dahil kasi karamihan po nung inassess po ni Jerma Galong 
yung mga lahat ng mga NCR mayors, binigay po nila yung mga report, nagpunta rin po siya sa Cebu, nagpunta po rin po siya sa region na 4A, at ngayon po, uh, bukas po, pumunta po siya sa region 3, nakita po natin kulang pa yung ginagawa nating testing. Dahil po, karamihan, pagka po nag-trace tayo, ay uh, mababa po yung natitrace natin. Minsan, karamihan po sa mga ano, ang ratio po ng mga nakukuha ng mayor is 1 is to 20 ang pinakamataas, at iba pa is 1 is to 3. Ibig sabihin, mayroon pong nakakawala na mga positive na gumagala po sa atin. Maganda po yung, ano po, yung, uh, yung ginagawa po ni Jerome Magalong kasi si Jerome Magalong po, na-reduce niya po yung kanyang, kanyang, ano, kanyang uh, uh, cases from uh, as high as uh, 49 to 0. So talagang naisiro niya po yung, ano, sa, yung mga cases niya and uh, for almost uh, two weeks, wala po siyang new cases. At uh, titignan po natin yung kanyang, ano, kanyang kakayahan Ito rin po ang pinaka-basic uh, ginawa ng, ano, ng Japan. Ang ginawa po ng Japan is how to, ano, to, to follow the trail of the TB, uh, mga infectious diseases. So ang ginawa po ng Japan, pinalakas po nila yung tinatawag nilang more than hundreds of BHRTS, yung BHRTS, yung mga community, community facilities. Yung BHRTS po natin, ito yung tinatawag Barangay Health Emergency uh, Response Teams. Ito po yung talagang kung tutusin natin, Yung sa Cebu experience po natin, yun po ang pinalakas po ni General Simato. Nung kinausap niya po yung 80 na barangays ng Cebu, gumanda po ang kalagayan po ngayon ng Cebu. Uh, tumuas po ang kanyang dob, uh, doubling time, at the same time, yung kanyang r note bumaba po ng 1.1. Ibig sabihin yung reproduction niya po, yung transmission bumaba. Ngayon po nakikita po natin, maganda po ang uh, ginagawa ni General Magalong because of his passion, nag uh, meeting siya sa lahat ng mga mayors. At uh, kinukumpara niya yung mga experience ng ibang bansa at saka experience ng, 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 ng Baguio kung paano po mapa, mano, ma, ma, mapaayos ang tracing. At ganoon din po yung sa India, yung sinasabi nga po ni, no, ni introduce po sa amin ni SOH, ni Secretary Duque, yung uh, Darabi model wherein yung, yung hospital po ang pumupunta po doon sa mga Islam areas. Sila po ang nag-iisa-isa, nag-house to house kung sino po yung mga may kaso ng, ano, ng covid Doon lang po natin makukuha po ang talagang uh, makuha po natin na ma-isolate po natin siya. At uh, yun po, nakikita po natin, ginagawa po ngayon ng ating uh, mga char na si, ano, si uh, Secretary Vince ay talagang pina uh, pinaakyat niya po ang kapasidad natin sa uh, testing. Pati po yung supply chain po, niya, uh, supply chain po natin, yung mga consumables, inayos niya rin po. So ngayon po, pwede na tayo makapag-test ng uh, Uh, Na-break na, na po natin ang 26,900 na test natin noong July 17. So, ibig sabihin, nakapagtetest na po tayo isang araw na more or less 27,000 a day. Pagka na-reach po natin yung, ano, na-reach po natin yung, yung 32, uh, sinasabi po natin mga delubhasa, na we can save more than 4,000 to 6,000 deaths. Meaning, uh, maiwasan po natin yung uh, tinatawag nating magkaroon ng dead on arrival at the same time, Uh, bababa po yung mga severe cases kasi nagkakaroon na po na tayo ng early detection. Kasi po, na, pagka na-detect po natin kaagad ng maaga, symptomatic at moderate, pwede na po natin gamutin. Yun din po ang kagandahan po ngayon na magkakasama po kami nga, uh, uh, kasama po ni SOH, uh, nag nagpuputa po kami sa lahat ng mga ospital. Tinitingnan po namin ang capacity. Mr. President, makikita natin kung maitas lang natin ang ICU natin na more than, more than 1,000 na ICU beds at saka po uh, yung isolation beds. dito sa Metro Manila. Medyo makakagana po kasi kinausap natin po ang mga mga ospital. Kung sa ward beds, kaya po natin expand kasi ang ano po ng, ano, ng ospital, uh, 30% lang po ang kanilang uh, COVID patients. Pwede pa natin i-extend. Pero yung ICU po ang hindi po natin ma-extend kasi limited po ang ICU. At karamihan po na mga critical at saka mga tiyatawag natin pong critical at saka mga sibir, yun po ang nandun sa ICU. So, if uh, we will try to... Ano, to to tinatawag na to the dance with the virus, ang isang strategya po natin, dapat palakasin po natin ang ICU natin. At yun po, nakita po namin sa Carino uh, Memorial uh, Hospital, meron po tayong mega ER. Yung isang, isang ano po, yung isang, uh, isang uh, floor po doon, ginagawa ngayon, uh, yung isang floor, parang isang ER na po yun. At meron siyang 50 ICU beds. At doon po sa, ano, sa uh, uh, East Avenue Medical Center, binisita rin po namin ni Dr. Vega, At nakita po namin doon, meron po tayong 250 uh, beds at saka meron po tayong 25 ICU beds. Kung iyo po may dedicate po natin na COVID, sa COVID lang po yun, 
Uh, maganda po na magkaroon po tayo na tinatawag sa Metro Manila na four COVID hospitals dedicated. Kasi po, ang problema po natin, pagka kumi, kumaka, kumakain po tayo ng, ng percentage doon sa mga patient po na non-COVID, yung non-COVID po ang nakocompromise. Yung mga tinatawag natin may dialysis, yung mga cancer, yung po ang mga nagiging casualty po. So, ang uh, nakikita po namin, we will be recommending na kung magkaroon po na tayo ng zoning sa NCR, meron po dapat tayo ng apat na COVID hospitals para yun dedicated na hospitals na ginawa po ng China. Na, na, nagkaroon siya ng 10 days, they build a uh, COVID dedicated hospital. Yun po ang nakita namin na mas maganda po kasi nakita natin si, si uh, Dr. Vega, ang ginawa po ni Dr. Vega, ay nagkaroon siya ng tinatawag na one referral system sa buong NCR at saka sa Cebu. Yung experience po natin sa Cebu nakita po natin gumanda po dahil kasi uh, nung uh, pinag-aralan po ni Dr. Vega na yung treatment and care natin, mababawasan po ang pagkamamatay dahil kasi early treatment at saka po yung early detection. So yung uh, pag-design po natin na meron po tayong apat na char, uh, maganda po yun kasi yung uh, kay Secretary Villar po, More than 167 na evacuation building ang napagawa niya at ngayon po nagagamit na po natin yung 68 doon sa COVID patients. Na more than 2,500 na po ang kanyang gumagamit po doon. Kaya po lahat po ng tao na mga dedicated na na-assign po natin, si Jerry Magalong, he has the passion to really search for the track, to track yung lahat po ng mga Cases. At same time, si Vince Dizon naman, he is uh, very passionate in ramping up the, the, test, the testing capacity that we had. And also with the supervision of uh, Secretary Villar, yung DPWH po nationwide po gumagawa po ng mga quarantine facilities so that we can ready the capacity kung just in case magkaroon ng surge, kayang-kaya po natin. And at the same time, si Dr. Vega, through the direction of the DOH, kayang-kaya po natin uh, kahit na mag-open tayo ng economy, we will be ready to cope and dance with the virus by having an additional capacity, especially kung magpag-produce po tayo ng uh, COVID-dedicated hospital para hindi po tayo magkaroon din ng casualty sa non-COVID, yun po ang maganda pong gawin po natin, sir. Yun lang po, mahal na President, yun po ang uh, aming uh, report po sa inyo. Uh, my countrymen, we continue to meet uh, regularly to talk about our problem. Uh, perhaps our number one problem today is the COVID. I am as mad as you. Galit ako pariho tayo sa nangyari. Uh, and ginusto ninyo na buksan ko na ang puerta. Gusto ko yan. Gusto ko ang nagpipigil na lang sa akin, ang science. Gusto ko kasi nagalit na pati ako, nakulong na ilang buwan. Naging inutil na rin ako. Eh. I have become, except for the voluminous papers, na inutil na ako, na akong magawa na naiwan ko. But, you know, uh, COVID is COVID. Alam ninyo, sa Amerika, sa ibang lugar, or those countries, pati China nga eh, too early, maaga sila binuksan. Sinabi sila ng WHO, wag. Binuksan nila, ah, ngayon nagbalik sila, parang second wave. America is still number one with so many thousands dying. Hindi ito biro, hindi naman ito sabihin mo yung binda, makikita mo naman sa TV at binabalita naman dito sa atin. So we are trying our best. Uh, we have the secretary of uh, uh, spokesman to keep you informed of what we're doing. General uh, Delfin Lorenzana, Dr. Doki, uh, who has my trust. Si General Galvez, General Anyo, ma'am. 
sa education, kay isang sektor yan, na worried kami. Alam mo, ang edukasyon, kinabukasan ng mga bata yan. They have to finish a course na para mabuhay sila. So, I, I know the, the apprehensions of uh, uh, Secretary Brunet. Pero maghintay kayo. Maghintay na lang. Actually, ang pinangako ako sa inyo, kung meron ng uh, ano ito, yung vaccine, meron na uh, final sa trial sa Russia, binitawa na nila. I'm sure China has already won. Ang Amerika, ang takot ko na nga noon, kasi nga mahirap tayo and we need so many millions also. As a matter of fact, I would need about 110 million. Para mapainom ko sa lahat, para ang COVID nandyan pa, pero maging inutil na. Pag nakainom na tayo ng ano, vaksin, uh, yung influenza, yung H1N1, nandyan yan sila, pero pag nakainom ka na ng vaksin, purnada na yan sila. But they remain on the air, but we are immunized already. So, maghintay lang kayo ng kunti. Uh, para sa mga plano natin, put it something like hanggang towards the end of the year. If, but if there is a thing that develops, which is really good for you, uh, mauna ako. Mangot, mag-utang ako. Uh, magpabili ako kung saan magpabili ng lupa para ipagbili ko ng, ibili ko ng medicine. In the meantime, wala, mini America, Europe, wala isa. O isa lang ang ano nila, o dalawa, tatlo. Social distancing. Huwag kayong magsigaw-sigaw ba nakadikit-dikit. Mask. America, Russia, lahat, China, mask. Ito, importante talaga. Ngayon, kung wala kayo, I will try to buy as many as I can afford. Kung kaya ko, bigay namin yan sa inyo libre. But wear it. And, uh, mas kinagamitin mo siguro yan, dalawang beses, okay mo lang. O isprehan mo lang ng alcohol pagkatapos. Huwag yung ispray mo at isuot mo kaagad. Yung pagkatapos ng araw, hang it somewhere, isprehan mo lang ng Lysol if you can afford it. Yung wala, ibabad mo ng gasolina o diesel. Putang, yun ang COVID na yan. Hindi uubra yan dyan. Totoo. Mawala kayo. If you want to disinfect yun, maghanap mo ng gasolina. Babad mo lang yung kamay mo. Layo mo lang kayo baka magbog sa loob ng bahay ninyo. In the meantime, ang importante talaga dito is your perseverance, that's the word. You must persevere during this time. Simplihin ko, patience. Total dadating rin niya. Marunong ang Diyos. Alam niya hindi tayo niya pababayan. Especially Pilipinas kasi Kristiyanos tayo. Kaya mag-sakripisyo lang tayo ng konti. Total, ang ating idol, nag-sakripisyo man rin, pinaghahampas-hampas, ipinako pa sa krus. Tayo pa simba, simba man lang. Luhod-luhod ka lang dyan. So, dedicate it to the Lord that you also suffer for the country. Maraming salamat po.